Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium and I am back with part two of the procedural textures tutorial series. Basically what we're going to be doing is modeling some dirt clumps with the displacement modifier. Then modeling some grass assets and uh, using a gradient texture to color them. All of those assets will then be made into a particle system that covers our base mesh. If you haven't watched the first tutorial, that's fine. You won't have a material to put on your dirt clump assets and you will also not have a base mesh to grow the particles from. This will be completing this scene, however there may be more tutorials for procedural textures in the future. So anyways, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Let's jump right in and model the dirt clump asset. I'm going to add a cube and apply a subdivision surface modifier to that and then a displacement. This displacement modifier is going to be Veroni and uh, I'm going to turn it up quite a bit just so that we're warping the cube out of shape and getting rid of as much of that original shape as possible. Then I'm going to go back to the displacement modifier settings and I'm going to change the cube's texture coordinate to global. I'll add another subdivision surface and another displacement. I'll set the second displacement to clouds and the noise type will be hard. Then I'll turn its strength down on the displacement to uh, something like 0.3. I'll turn its mid-level down also so that we don't get mesh intersection and then I'll turn its depth up to 5. And uh, that looks pretty good, sort of a basic setup, but it will work. So then I'm going to tab into edit mode and duplicate this cube three times, dragging it on either side of the original cube along the x-axis. Then I'll grab all three of the cubes, duplicate them once more, and uh, then I'll scale them down on the y-axis so they're a little thinner as well. I tab into object mode and apply all the modifiers that we just added to that. I'll add a decimate modifier and set it to 0.5, then I'll hit apply on on that and uh, zoom out and duplicate this object three times pulling it out on the y-axis each time. I'll grab the second copy and I'll add a decimate modifier, turn it down to 0.25 and hit apply. Then I'll grab the third copy, set it to 0.1 and apply that. I'll then add a subdivision surface and another decimate, apply both of those. Then I'll add yet another subdivision surface and another decimate. Turn that decimate down to 0.2 and hit apply on both of those modifiers. This will make sure that just the very basic shape of our objects has survived and there are no details left. Then I will go into object mode, hit control alt shift C and uh, apply the origin to the geometry and uh, then I'm going to add them to a group. The first group is called big, the second group is called medium, and the third group is called small. I'll just repeat this until I have all three groups prepared. Next I'm going to paint a weight map onto our landscape here. I'm just painting an area where we can grow the particles from. If you do your weight map painting from the camera view, that will make sure none of the areas out of view of the camera will get painted and uh, it will make sure that the particles are only growing where the camera can see. I'm going to save the file and add the first particle system. This will be the biggest dirt clumps. I'll select hair and uh, then I'm going to go down add group under render settings. I'll select the big group that we created and turn its amount down to 15. I'll set its size up quite a bit. I'm going to go with 12 to start out with. Then I'm going to go to the vertex groups and apply the vertex group that we painted. I'll set its seed up until I find something that I like. Um, for this group of rocks I went pretty high. Then I'll check rotation, check normal and turn its random rotation up quite a bit. Then I kept moving the seat up all the way until I found something that I liked. You want to pick something that works with the composition, so I went for uh, most of the big clumps in the background and maybe a couple in the foreground. And uh, that looks pretty good, so now I'm going to select one of our dirt clods and I'll apply the dirt material to it. Then I'll select all of them and hit Control l Materials. Next I'm going to add another particle system to our landscape mesh. I will check hair again and uh, I'll turn its uh, number down to 200. I'll set it to medium and uh, then I'll turn its rotation to be random as well. 
The one thing that we are going to do different from the last particle system settings is set children for this one. So scroll down, hit children, I am going to choose interpolated and uh, then I'll turn the main number of particles down to 100 and the children down to 10 for the render and display. Uh, next I'm going to fiddle with these settings. I'll turn the clump down, the length down, and the threshold up and uh, mess around uh, until you find something that's pretty random and uh, broken up. The reason you would use a child particle system is so that you don't have your dirt placed evenly over the entire mesh. Instead you have areas where the um, detail, the dirt particle detail is denser and areas where there is none. So uh, the viewport looks pretty messy right now with the lighting setup I have on. I'll just turn on a matte cap so we can see everything a little bit easier. Then I'll add another particle system. I'll select hair for this one as well. All of its settings are going to be the same as the last particle system, except I'm going to choose the small group that we created and turn their size down quite a bit. I'll turn the random size up under physics again and uh, select children again as well. I'll turn the render amount down to 10, the main amount down to 500, and uh, then I'll click on this little icon under the plus and minus particle systems and select duplicate particle systems. Hit the little 2 next to the particle system settings name so that we can start fresh and not mess up the settings of the other one. I'm going to turn the hair length down significantly and uh, then I'm going to go and turn the amount of children up to 30 to start out with. Then I'm going to start messing around with the other values. I'm going to turn the clump up a bit to 0.2 to spread the particles out a little bit and then turn the render and display up to 30. I'll turn the particle emission amount to 1000 and uh, I think that looks pretty good. I'll turn their random size up to 0.6 and uh, then we are ready for a render. So I'm going to hit render and uh, come back when it's done. And here's what we got from that. As you can see they are the scene is now much more realistic, more grungy and dirty and uh, a lot more detailed as well. What you want to do is make your particle system small enough that they sort of blend in with your bump map. That way the people can't spot the difference between a particle and the bump map. Here I'm choosing filmic color management. Um, however, I don't always do this and sometimes I will use the other uh, color management systems, even the default. Um, and I think I actually do end up using the default in the end for this one. Anyways, next we're going to create our grass particles. I'm going to add a plane and move it up so that its base is at the origin of the geometry. Then I'll go into object mode, rotate it up, and uh, apply the rotation so that it's standing up straight on the grid floor. Then I'm going to hit period to set the pivot point to the 3D cursor, and uh, I'm going to turn proportional editing on. I'm going to grab just the top vertice and select sharp for the fall off on the proportional editing. Then I can rotate this and curve the grass out. However, first I'm going to give the grass a little bit of a tube shape. I'm just going to add a single loop in the middle, deselect the top vertice of this loop, and drag the rest of the vertices out along the y-axis just a little bit. Then I'm going to deselect the next vertice down, drag them out a little more, and continue this for a couple of vertices so that the curve in the grass gets more intense towards the bottom. Next I will grab only the top vertices of the grass plant, turn on proportional editing, and give the grass some curve. I'm going to duplicate only the top of the grass plant and move it down so we have sort of a second leaf coming off of the grass. Then I'll duplicate this leaf again and move it to the bottom, rotating it around just to give the grass plant a little bit of variety. Next I'm going to duplicate the entire plant to call the first one grass 001 and the second one grass 002. 
I'm going to tab into edit mode on grass002, delete everything except for one of the bottom set of vertices. Um, this set of vertices I'm going to extrude up. Uh, however, I'm going to leave it uh, significantly shorter than the first grass plant just to make it uh, a little bit different, a little more stubby, and uh, just have some variety. Add another loop cut in the middle, scaling that up a little bit. Then I'm going to add more loop cuts evenly um, up along the Z axis of this grass plant just so that we can curve it back the same way we did with the other grass plant. Hit O to turn on proportional editing, zoom out a little bit, and uh, then rotate this grass plant backwards as well to give it some curve. However, we're not going to curve it as much as we curved the previous grass plant. Then I'm going to duplicate the top of this grass plant and move it down just like we did on the last one. Do this one more time to make a shorter leaf as well, just so that we have three grass leaves kind of poking up and uh, giving some more believability, I think, to this model. And uh, those are our grass assets. Next, I'm going to uh, position the view down here in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen just so that we can see the grass plants and begin working on their material. Then I'm going to hit Shift-Z to use this kind of pathetic real-time rendering that Cycles has. Next, I'm going to add in a sun lamp so that we can get some light on these grass plants and uh, watch how our material reacts with lighting. Next I'm going to hit smooth shading on both of them and go into the node editor to create the material. I'm going to hit new material and call this grass. I'll select the material and uh, then I'm going to grab a texture. This is going to be a gradient texture. I'll grab a texture coordinate and plug the generated into the gradient texture. Then I'll add a vector and uh, this is going to be a mapping node. I'll turn its rotation to 90 degrees on all axes, uh, just like we did with the world background. And uh, then I'm going to add in a color ramp in between the gradient texture and the diffuse shader. I'll set this to a light greenish and uh, just begin painting in the colors of my grass texture here. It's going to go from a pretty light green to a uh, bluer green and then all the way to a brownish. I'll set the falloff to B spline so that I can get the values closer to each other without getting weird falloff. Next I'll control shift click on the diffuse shader. I'll shift A, add in a mix shader. Plug this in between the diffuse shader and the material output. I'll duplicate the diffuse shader, switch it out for a translucent and mix the diffuse and the translucent together. I'll duplicate the mix shader again and plug a glossy shader in here. I'll turn the mix shader for the glossy down quite a ways then I'll plug the color ramp into the color of both the diffuse and the translucent shaders. I'll set the roughness for the color ramp down to 0.1 and um, leave the mix shader for the glossy shader pretty low. Next I'll add in a hue saturation and value and plug this in between the diffuse shader and the color ramp. I'll turn the saturation down and the value down quite a bit as well. And uh, that's basically it for the grass material. It's quite simple and I think it's just as realistic as any grass shader that has used images. I'll add another particle system. This one will be hair as well and I'll check advanced. Here I'll go under vertex groups and apply the same vertex groups we used on the rest of the dirt. I'll turn the size down to 4 to start out with and choose object instead of group this time. I'll type in grass and select grass 001. I'll check rotation and then turn the hair length up again. However, all the grass is laying down so we need to go back to the grass layer. Apply its rotation and then rotate it on the Y axis 90 degrees. Next I will turn the hair length up again to 3 and then check rotation. I will choose initial rotation normal and then turn the random up slightly. Then I'm going to turn the random phase all the way up to its max value, which is 2. Then I'm going to duplicate this particle system. You should hit the 2 next to the settings name of the particle system. However, I forgot to. Anyways, um, set the seed up so that the grass particles aren't growing out of the same place. Then I'm going to choose grass 002 instead of grass 001. 
And uh, then I'm going to set the particle number up. I'm going to go with 8,000. And I'm going to try 16,000. And uh, that is a lot of grass particles. So here I am setting all the settings back for the original grass particle system, which I duplicated and forgot to make a copy of. Here I am doing a little viewport test render, and uh, then I'm going to do a final render as well. Hit Control S to save your file, and then go to the UV image editor. I'm going to change to slot 3, and uh, do a render. So here I am back. I paused the render because I've got some weird shading problems with the grass. Basically, the mix shader on the translucent and diffuse was way too high. There was too much translucent shader and too little diffuse. So I just set that back, and uh, then I modeled one more plant just by modeling a leaf and uh, duplicating it around some stems. Added that in as a particle system, and I got this, which is pretty good. And other than the fact that there is a giant torus of dirt, it's photorealistic. However, if I could, I would like to give the ground a little more work. I would turn up the resolution possibly a little bit and tweak the bump maps. However, it looks close enough, and it certainly looks as good as any render that uses images. Although I did this on a torus and a plane, you can do it in a realistic situation as well and it will look just as good or better because it's more believable when it's not growing on a giant torus. I should note that the more procedural textures you have in your scene, the harder it's going to be on your computer. However, just like using image textures, procedural textures have their advantages and their disadvantages. I'd also like to say here that I have my cryptocurrency wallet addresses listed in the description below. So if any of you are into digital currency, you can support Iridesium using the cryptographic wallet addresses below. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. This is Iridesium.